Happy Monday Thursday to you all. My name is Reverend Phil Dix and I'm the pastor of the Mingo Farrar United Methodist Churches. Today is Monday Thursday, a special opportunity for us to remind ourselves of the time when Jesus gathered together with his disciples in the upper room in order to celebrate what's referred to oftentimes as the Last Supper. In reality, it was a Passover service, the opportunity that Jesus always had, always in the lifetime of a Jewish rabbi or others, to choose to next year in Jerusalem. And that was the setting of Jesus. He had just come through the triumphal entry into the city. He'd gone through that as part of Palm Sunday. And now came the opportunity for him to gather together with his disciples and to share the Passover. But Jesus changed the Passover. And we'll be talking about that and sharing about that as we also celebrate communion together. I want to ask you if you'd like to, to simply pause the video at any point and go ahead and retrieve for you a bread that you can use, either a bread, a cracker, that you can use for our communion service that we'll be sharing later, and also a chalice, a chalice or a cup that would contain grape juice or some other liquid that you'd like to use. And we'll be using that as part of our celebration for our actual communion service as we share that together. So now I'm going to ask you to take a moment go to retrieve those items and then come back and then we'll be ready to continue our video and our service together. Our Monday Thursday service will be an interactive service this year. I'll be putting up on the screen parts of the service and asking you to read the parts that are indicated by all. I'll be reading the other parts. There'll be songs that we'll be sharing and if you'd like to join with me in singing those songs we would love to have you do that part of this Monday Thursday service together. And now I'm going to take an opportunity to share that screen as we begin our services as part of our communion time together. Jesus spent his life and teachings teaching us the meaning of love. Through word and deed, Jesus showed us how to love God and to love one another. He fed the hungry, he healed the sick, and he invited the women and the children and the tax collectors and the sinners to come to his table. He broke bread with the least and the lost and shared the cup of redemption with them all. Jesus crossed the boundaries of race and nationality, of ethnicity, gender, and class. He challenged the religious authority and he scoffed at pomposity and self-absorbed grandeur. He called out the hypocrites and he admonished the scribes and the Pharisees for their hardened hearts. But he brought a simple message, love God, love yourself, and love one another. Join with me. We gather in the name of Jesus and remember the way that he showed us. We gather to remember not just his death, but his life. Will you join with me as we join together in singing, His Name is Wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, He is the mighty King. Master of everything, his name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. This night he gathered with his disciples, in the Last Supper, 
Jesus, my Lord, broke the bread with them, cup shared among them, do in remembrance, Jesus, my Lord, he's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. The way of Jesus goes through the cross, but we are not there yet, but it is close. We can see its shadow and we can feel the dark, cold night. And we know that the enemies of God are conspiring. They have had enough of him. He threatened their comfort, he threatened their way of life, and he threatens their power. And they will come for him. First though, we gather. We gather with Jesus and his closest friends. We gather with those that call him teacher, rabbi, and friend. We gather for the Passover meal. To remember that God saved the people from slavery. God saved once. God can save again and again. God saves forevermore. Join with me. God saved the Israelites at Passover and revealed that it is God who reigns, not the Pharaoh. Our God saved once. God saves forevermore. I'm going to take an opportunity to share with you a little bit about the Passover meal. The Passover meal is that tradition that's held every year, a Passover time very similar to the time in which we celebrate together. The Passover was an opportunity for Jesus to gather with his disciples and for others to pause and to remember the great stories. The Jewish faith was always made of great stories, stories about history, stories about time, Stories that reminded them about how God was faithful to them in their life and in their living. And so it was through signs and symbols that they would use that the sharing would take place and the story was retold over and over again. That was the Passover. It was the choice of every Jew that at the end of the Passover service, there's the phrase that's used that says, next year in Jerusalem, there was always the hope to be there. Jesus had found himself there with his disciples. And so in these last few hours of his life, the most important of all times and moments, Jesus the rabbi shares with his disciples the signs and symbols of the faith. In the middle of the Passover service itself, there's what's called the Passover plate. And the Passover plate is one that is used in order to tell the story through signs and symbols. On this particular plate that I brought back from Jerusalem, You'll see there's a place for eggs, horseradish, parsley, harrowset, which is a mixture of nuts and oranges, and then bitter herbs and shank bone. Each of these had a symbolic way of portraying the story of the captivity of the Jews and their desire to be able to be free and for God to make that freedom a reality. The horseradish was used in order to talk about the bitterness that they had received in captivity. The parsley was that of green, the promise that was given that new hope would come, much like the springtime that we see today. But it was also within a bowl of salted water, which reminded us of the tears that had occurred and the tears that had gone from the people being in captivity. Harrowset was a mixture of nuts and oranges, sometimes apples. It was to resemble the mortar that was used. And you remember in the biblical story, that they finally were forced to actually put buildings together without even mud and making bricks. And this begins to share that as the mortar that was used, the Harrowseth reminds them of the story. There were also the bitter herbs that remind us the bitterness of the captivity. The shank bone, which remind them of the, of the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Recognition of the, 
of the lamb that was sacrificed each time, as well as the egg, which was part of the sacrificial offering within the temple itself. Of course, in the midst of all of this was the unleavened bread, the bread of curry that was part of the celebration and part of the story itself. Also upon the table would be several other items. One of those would be something called the cup of Elijah. The cup of Elijah was a cup that was an ornate cup. It was promised that at one of the Passover ceremonies, the prophet Elijah, the great prophet, would return and declare that the Messiah had come. In some Passover traditions, there's a table and along with a chair that is left empty for Elijah if he should come. And there's also a door that's left ajar so he could enter the room. The cup of Elijah could only be shared by Elijah himself telling us of the coming of the Messiah. Therefore, the cup of Elijah found itself in prominence upon the table and even a pause within the service looking to the door to see if Elijah would come. But with no one coming to the door, it was once again, perhaps next year, the promise will be fulfilled. Also on the table was something called the atacophen, the dessert bread. The dessert bread was one that was broken in half, some shared at the table, the other was wrapped in a special cloth and was hidden somewhere in the room. And so as part of the ceremony, at the very end of the ceremony, the children would go and find the atacophen bread, bring it back, and they were rewarded by giving a piece of the bread itself and shared with others. It was the bread that was the, the greatest value, the greatest symbolism. It was the, it was the long awaited that had arrived. And part of that was all of the Passover meal itself. So imagine what happens when Jesus begins the Passover meal. But this time, rather than waiting for the atacophen to be brought out at the very end of the ceremony, Jesus reaches for it and he begins to break it. And he says to the disciples, this bread is my body broken for you and many for the forgiveness of your sins. Can you imagine the astonishment of the disciples? Jesus, what are you doing? You're a rabbi, you're, you're completely confused of the service. That doesn't come out to the very end and you're bringing it out in the beginning. And suddenly Jesus began to foretell this overturning of reality of, of how he was perceived. It was similar to when Jesus found himself coming into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. They'd expected a triumphal entry of one to come to overthrow Rome. But Jesus came to talk about love. Jesus took the bread and broke it and offered to them. And then Jesus took of the cup, the cup that no one would eat. The cup that was to his right, he would pick it up, the cup of Elijah. I'm sure they would be gasped as they said, Jesus, what are you doing? And Jesus held this cup up with all the symbolism of it representing the coming of the Messiah. And he says to them, this cup is my blood poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink and be thankful in your hearts. At this particular point, everything was turned upside down. The Passover was nothing like they'd ever seen. And Jesus talked in these strange words again about his body and blood, about his death. And that's one thing the disciples and others did not want to hear him talk about. But Jesus knew the eventuality. He knew the price that had to be paid. As John 3.16 reminds us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting. That becomes the symbolism of the great Passover. And it becomes that symbolism in an important way as we begin to hear and to share in what took place that day. Let's continue with our readings together. And even as they were sharing this sacred meal together, the disciples were not all of one heart. Jesus knew that he was asking much from these men and he knew that they would fail him. Judas had already agreed to betray Jesus to the religious authorities. He was angry at some slight. Was he disappointed that Jesus would not raise an army against the Romans? Was he upset with the value of the oil that the woman wasted when she anointed Jesus? We will never know Judas's heart, but Jesus knew that he he would be betrayed. And what did Jesus do with the man that was to betray him? He broke bread with him. And all the disciples were deeply saddened. And they asked, I would never betray you, Lord. 
It's not me, is it? Is it I? Join with us in singing one of these traditional hymns of the faith. What wondrous love is this? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of this to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. And on the night in which Jesus was betrayed by his friends, he took the bread and gave thanks to God and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to God and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, and as often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in the remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith, the threefold statement of our faith, spoken since the beginning of our Christian faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us once again proclaim our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Oh God, pour out your spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts that we offer together to you of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by the blood of Christ. By all your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forevermore. I invite you now, if you would, to receive the bread and cup that you have there with you. And once again, to remind you that we have blessed this host, this bread that is offered, the unleavened bread, the bread of celebration, the body broken of Christ. Take and eat and be thankful. And likewise, when the supper had ended, Jesus took the cup. And having raised it to heaven, he blessed it. And he offered it to his disciples, saying, This cup is my blood, poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink and be thankful.
and then remember the words that Jesus spoke. As often as you gather together, do this in remembrance of me. When the holy meal had been shared, the disciples began to argue over which one would be the greatest. Even here, at the end of their time together, they did not seem to understand what Jesus had been teaching them all along. He reminded them that to be great in the kingdom of God, one is meant to serve. After Jesus' talk of betrayal, the disciples' argument, and Jesus' rebuke of them, the disciples seemed to be growing anxious. And Peter proclaimed, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And Jesus replied, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you knew me. And Jesus appeared, denied, lonesome, even as the disciples surrounded him. For this time was coming and only he could walk that valley alone. Afterwards, Jesus led his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane. He asked them to pray for him, for he wanted to be alone. And there, Jesus prayed. He asked his friends to keep watch, but they kept falling asleep, and he prayed for another way out. He prayed in anguish, and he prayed as a man who could feel pain, who would be hurt by betrayal, who would be scarred by the scourge, who would bleed when nails were driven into his arms and legs. He prayed as a man who knew that if he followed God's will, he would be charged, convicted, mocked and humiliated, abandoned, and then nailed to that cross. Knowing all of this full well, he prayed. Not my will, but yours. Then he stood up for all that he had lived for. When he got up from the prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you might not come into a time of trial. Judas said to Jesus, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Join with me in singing. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died. My richest gain I count but loss and for contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. And there was a brief skirmish at the arrest, but his disciples quickly scattered. And Peter, who had only hours before promised 
to go with Jesus to prison, even death, followed from a distance. And during the trial, Peter remained hidden in the shadows. First, a servant girl saw him and said, this man was also with him. Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else on seeing him said, you also are one of them. I am not. I do not know this man. And then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, surely this man was with him, for he is a Galilean. I do not know what you are talking about. I do not know Jesus. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And then Peter remembered what Jesus had said to him, and he wept bitterly. Will you join with me in singing? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to that tree? Oh, sometimes. It causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Our service is at an end and we have made that journey with Jesus. We've shared in the Passover and we have shared in the cup and we have shared in the bread, his body and blood for us. We've gone through the denial of Peter. We've gone through Judas' betrayal of Jesus. And now we enter into that final time and hour. Let me remind you that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m., we will also be celebrating together the Good Friday service. It is a service of darkness. It is a service that reminds us of all who have betrayed Jesus and have gone. It reminds us of Jesus hanging on the cross and the last words that Jesus spoke that are immortalized within Scripture and that we will hear again and that we will value and that we will take to our hearts. That it may also remind us of the sorrow and the sadness of Jesus hanging upon that cross and his death. I do invite you to share with others, either by YouTube or on phone, to come and to join us so that we will be able to share in that final story. And then to remind you of Easter Sunday, it may be Friday that's coming, but Easter will soon be upon us, and we'll celebrate together as Easter. The Farrar United Methodist Church will celebrate together at 9 a.m., not in the church, but online in Zoom meeting. If you simply contact the church office or the website, 
or send us a note at the church office. We'll be glad to send you the link for that or contact any member. They'll all have those links to share with you. And then for the Mingo United Methodist Church at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, repeated the same service with that congregation and others. We welcome visitors and guests. Visitors are expected because we are Easter people and Easter will be what we celebrate. And now friends, as you go your way, let me remind you of a prayer and a blessing to share with you. And now as we go from this place, may the spirit and the presence of Christ go with you. May the story of Christ become your story. And may we join together in those final walks. For when we see the life of Christ in the darkness that surrounded it, the brightness of resurrection and the hope of resurrection becomes all the more bright. Thank you for joining us together today. Thank you for being on that journey. And now as Jesus would say, my peace I leave with you. A peace not as the world gives do I give to you, but a peace that goes beyond human understanding. A peace that not this world gives. And so in this time of pandemic, remembering of the story, we seek the peace of Christ. And may that peace be yours throughout the rest of this day, through this evening, through a night's sleep of rest as we rest in the arms of Jesus. And now may the blessings of God the Father, Christ the Son, and of the Holy Spirit go with you and abide with you forevermore. Go in the love and in the peace of Christ. Thank you for joining.